So, ladies and gents, let's uh, uh, start uh, the the session by uh, kind of bringing the uh, uh, what you may call it. The, let me add these things over here. Copy. I just want to bring the utils to the page as usual. All right, so let's uh, start by uh, uh, creating some kind of a, a class to help us understand the concept. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create, uh, the, first of all, let's have our um, uh, includes and all the good stuff. Um, can everybody uh, see the the screen is it big enough actually I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, reset it so is uh, screen readable now maybe just a little bit bigger sure is it good better now man are you okay this is good okay all right if you want it bigger let me know is it good All right. Good morning, man, by the way. Morning. Man, uh, you, did you, um, let me just, oh, no, that's good. I thought that uh, I had, uh, no, I don't have it. I thought I had a question from you. Nan, did you, uh, did we have an appointment? I don't think we did. No, we don't have the appointment. No, we don't, we don't. Okay, I thought that, okay. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, as I was saying, let's, uh, let's start by creating a, a sample class just to see what we want to do. And then we'll continue after that and see what's going on. All right, uh, uh, I'm going to create a, a simple class, a, a class that, uh, that is just created because of the examples that I want to write. Um, as usual, I create a class, something like a, a container. I call it a container. And I'm going to have a data in the class and some constructors and stuff to just make the class work. Very simple and straightforward thing. So container, something like that. I'm going to go int data and by default, I make it zero. Yeah, I'm going to pass that data to mData and initialize it right off the bat. And I uh, have this as an empty uh, copy concept, not an empty, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 defaulted uh, uh, constructor. And also I'm going to create a, a couple of uh, uh, functionality to the function let's say an operator plus that just adds two containers and a display to display the container uh, I'm gonna overload the um, I'm gonna make it uh, so I'm gonna make it like this I'm gonna say uh, class printable and in this printable class I'm gonna create something like I'm gonna put public in here and I'm just going to create an O stream uh, display O stream reference OS const and I'm going to make it a pure virtual function and obviously it's virtual so that's going to be an interface something that's printable or let's name it better so displayable okay let's put it like this and um, overload the O stream for it. So 
we're gonna have something like uh, o stream reference um, operator uh, insertion operator and I'm gonna have o stream reference OSTR and we're going to receive a constant displayable and let's make that capital because it's a class displayable reference D and in here I'm going to say return D dot display and pass the OSTR to it and then I'm going to make a container a child of this thing so I don't have to uh, displayable. I, I don't have to create another one like that, um, another operator uh, to just print it. I just want it to be printable. So because I'm lazy, I'm going to do it this way. So uh, we are OK down to this point, yeah? OK, so in my int main, I can have a container C1 and C C1. Let's set C1 to 10. And I'm gonna have C2 set to 20. I can say C out uh, C1 and the space and C2 and L and I can say something like uh, and let's have a C3 <coughs> and then I'm gonna have C3 is set to C1 plus C2 and then in here I'm gonna go C out C3 and running the program We'll show the two containers. Container one is 10, container, the other container is 20, and this one says C and 30. So, so this uh, um, uh, class of container of mine is displayable, and it has a plus equal to over here. I can actually, yeah, a, a plus equal over there too. Um, are we good about this? Everything is good down to this point? Sahar, what's up? Again by mistake. I don't know why I do that. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, all right. All right. So this is the container that we have. Now I'm going to create another class, and I'm going to cl call that class, let's say, Mark. Okay? So uh, a Mark is another class, something like container. Um it can be added and can be displayed, and it's a child of displayable. Therefore, uh, the exact same thing that I have done for container, I can do it for, for a mark, which is essentially something like this. I can go uh, mark, and this is going to be M1. This is going to be M2 and M3 and I'm going to print M1 and M2 so as you see now mark is something like a container obviously it has some uh, differences with container but uh, it works it, it works exactly like container and it's displayable um, and uh, the only difference is that when uh, mark is added to another mark, um, instead of uh, what it's going to do, it's going to make sure that the result of the two things are 100. Otherwise, if, if it's greater than 100, it will adjust it to 100. So just a simple uh, thing between the two classes. So the only thing that is shared between two classes, is if the two things that are shared with classes are that they both have plus operators and they're displayable. Um, are we good down to this point? All right. 
so now we have the two classes that we don't have they have operator plus and uh, they're displayable which is okay we know that too now let's start our session so this is this was just the beginning of something we cr I created this so I can actually uh, go on and and uh, uh, do my teaching on the on the subject that we have today so let's I'm just gonna save this and so just ignore all the things that we have seen over here and I'm just gonna start from something completely clean over here and not even show you the the marking container I just want you to have the marking container available over there so <coughs> Let's say I want to have a function um, for some reason. I want to have a, a function that um, uh, adds the uh, adds two um, two values and displays them. So something like I'm going to create a function for like let's say integer. I'm going to say uh, add and display. And then in here, I'm going to put int a and int b. So this function of mine will essentially have an integer c over here that sets to a plus b, adds the two. Then it's going to say c out sum is. And it's going to display the c. Okay. And then at the end, it's going to return the c. So in here, I can have integer a set to 10, b set to 20, and I can have c over here, and then I can say uh, c is set to add and display, and I'm going to go a and b, and in here, I'm going to say c out the function the function returned C okay so a very simple function I created over here I call it add and display um, oops um, add and add and display I'm going to actually run this as you see it passes the two values it simply it's kindergarten thing. It's it's not very um, difficult to understand. It's going to say s the sum is c, and it's going to say the function return uh, the, the the sum is thirty. I say it in, in in Persian for some reason. The sum is thirty, and the the function uh, returned thirty two. Um, are we okay with this? If I have another thing over here, let's say a double, and I'll go double, and I'm going to put over here uh, D set to 10.1 and uh, E set to 20.2 and F in here, and I wrote something like this. Uh, F is set to add and display a D and E and I and I say over here the function returned F if I write something like this uh, first of all would this run Yeah, it would run. Obviously, the, the, the results are going to be garbage, but it runs. That was uh, uh, the first uh, thing that we talked about when we talked about ca it's casting that we learned in, in C language. So what happens is that it will run, but instead of having 30.3, it's going to say the sum, sum is 30 because it casts the double into an integer and passes it over here and cast the second oh I put a and b over here this is d and e actually oh sorry yeah that's good so it actually wait a minute there we go so 
it actually um, uh, casts the D to an integer, passes it over there. Therefore, um, the result is going to be 30 for the second function. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, having something like this, if I want to do this add and display, I want this double one to work properly, and I want it to actually re return 30.3 to me, I know that I have a tool in C++ to do so called overloading. It's part of polymorphism. And if I just copy this over here and put the exact same thing over here and change the int to double and change this int to double and this one to double and this one to double then when I run the program we will see that the second 30 over here changed to 30.3 and why this thing happened because we know that in C++ with operator overloading when you actually create uh, 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 <coughs> a function with different types it becomes uh, the same function that is working in a different way and therefore uh, from the type of the function call it's gonna call the proper one so instead because this is these are past two doubles it can actually uh, uh, get that add and display and uh, call the double one and therefore we're gonna get 30.3 over there are we okay with this <laughs> Winston, William, Jerry, Bruno, where are you guys? All right. <clears throat> okay, so uh, so if you recall in here we had a container and a mark two which means uh, if I wanted to I could actually uh, do an add and display for a mark two which means I could just copy this thing just and this is extremely important to, as you see I'm just copying the exact same function and in here I'm gonna say return a mark and I change that one to mark and I change this double to mark and I change this double to mark and then in here I'm gonna say I now I can create mark set to uh, mark uh, I'm gonna say M and I'm gonna set that one to say I don't know about 50 and I'm gonna S have another one N and then set that one to uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, 40 something like that and um, all over here and now I can actually uh, do the same thing over here for the mark and I could say over here O is set to M and N and when I run this program because mark has the plus operator overloaded for it um, when I run the program it would work perfectly so uh, you did not change your oh, oh. <laughs> thank you Yeah, so if I do this, now a mark is going to show 90. And I can do the exact same thing with the container, which means if I just copy this one and again paste it over here and go container, and I repeat the same thing. As you see, I'm just changing the types <clears throat> of what is needed to be changed. And in here, I could now have a container 
say P set to 100, Q set to 200, and R, and I can copy the whole thing over here. And in here I can say R is set to P and Q, and in here I can show the R thingy, and when I run the program now, you will see that obviously it's going to run it as a container, and uh, it works perfectly for that because container has the things needed for this function to work, and everything is working perfectly. Uh, are we okay down to this point? Um, Father, I'm, I'm okay, but I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So, are you saying, um, just, is there an, okay, uh, how do I put the question? Is there anything specific to these um, classes that you are able to use them? Or can we just create, even if it's an empty class with nothing inside, we can use it in a function like this. Say, I create a class with yeah, so, empty, so... empty body and... So what I'm saying, what you're saying to have a class over here called whatever. Mm -hmm. And in this whatever class of mine, I have say something like this. I'm going to say, so actually, let me just make it even easier. I'm going to copy this class. In here, instead of operator plus, I have say sum. Okay, and let's call this one um, whatever. <laughs> okay, so this whatever class of mine. Oh. So this whatever class of mine. does the same capabilities but it doesn't have the operator plus equal and has a sum that's what you're saying right a class that is a class but doesn't have exactly what we had in the other one is that what you're saying yes so um, yes so I'm, I'm basically asking is there anything specific about these classes that you yes. are able to use them in any function not in any function it did you see any function in here you like, saw a like specific this. function. Actually, so you're going to be with me to answer that. If I put over here whatever to add and display, will this work? I don't think so because whatever doesn't have a plus. Thank you. So what these classes can be used in this function of mine because they have the plus equal. Not only that, let's say whatever is not displayable and it can just display you have to call its display if if you do that even that causes trouble you see that okay so this cannot be used for that now victor tell me what is common between these four functions they have the same um uh, function name and the same number of um operator op Brands. No, and? You forgot the most important one. You know it, but you're not putting your finger on it. Anyone else? What is common between these four functions? It's one word. The, the, the virtual... Um, Ali, what did you say? The name of functions? No, the name of functions are the same, obviously. Uh, the number of received arguments? Sure, but no, that's not the one. What is the most important common things between these four functions? The most important one. And I'm going to take this whatever away. 
because we don't want it. What is the most the same function definition? By definition, what you, you mean the body? Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Who was that? Oh, there we go. So it's the same function definition, but what do we call when a function definition is essentially it's what do we call that name, that magical name? You're perfectly correct. They have the same function definition. But do they? One is marked, the other one is double, the other one is integer. So. Overloading? No, no, no. She was perfectly right. It has the same function definition, but it's not definition. The definitions are not, not identical. One is int, one is double, one is mark, one is container. So the definitions are not identical. I want she. I want her to answer. <laughs> okay. So what oh, is declaration, not definition? Pardon me. Operation, you said. No, I said declaration. De de declaration. <laughs> no, they are the same. <laughs> so what is what? Is, okay. So this is extremely important. Now I want everybody to listen to this, and she is absolutely right. The declaration is the same. Actually, this is the declaration. This is the definition. So you were right when you said definition. But what is important between these four functions is that their logic is identical. Okay? Their logic is identical. The first add and display does what does to an integer, what the second one does to double, what the third one does to mark, and what the fourth one does to container. The logic of these four functions are identical. Are we okay with this? So if that's the case, when I have identical logic, let's say I have a, um, actually I do have a 10 year old daughter. Now let's say my 10 year old, I, 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 my 10 year old daughter is, uh, is here and I ask her, hey, um, I want, I have uh, a function. So if I have something like this, okay, and if I want to tell to my daughter to keep writing this function for four different types, for integer, for double, for container, for mark, what do I tell her? I'm going to write something like this. Uh, Sanyi, you have a question? No? No question? Okay. So I'm going to write such a thing for my daughter. And I'm going to say, please, I'm going to put something in here. Let's say I'll put over here question mark like that. And I'm going to put question mark like that. And I'm going to put question mark like that. And I'm going to put question mark over here. Now I can give this to anyone who doesn't even know what it's C++ is and tell them, could you please write four functions for me? Just replace the question mark with these four things each time. The first time, replace the question marks with integer. The second time, replace the question marks with double. The third one, return, replace it with mark. And the fourth one, re replace it with container. And all the functions will be written for me. Do we understand this? The thing is that we can actually do that with the compiler. So I can actually tell to the compiler, hey compiler, before you want to generate the code for me and complete your compilation, take a look at your source code and see how the function is being used and rewrite these function based on their usage. So the compiler comes over here. It says, I have an add and display with two integers and returning an int. I can just replace these question marks with an int. In here, I have an add and display that receives two doubles and returns a double. I can return the question marks with double. In here with mark, I can replace the question marks with, and so on and so forth. But how do I tell this to the compiler? It's very simple. You put some kind of a name in here. So let's say this one, I'm going to call it, ah, what do I call it? Uh, uh, 
uh, type. So this is going to be a type, okay? And I'm going to say this is a type, and a type, and a type, and a type. So I'm going to write over here. Um, uh, if I put type, you think type is a keyword. It's not type. You can put anything in here. But I'm putting a placeholder. So essentially, type over here is a placeholder that is supposed to change with the type based on how the function is called. Do we understand this? Now, all I need to do is to tell the compiler, hey, these types that you see, they are placeholders. You're supposed to change it with the type that is passing through. So how do we do that? <coughs> <coughs> My apologies. How do we do that? This is how we do it. I'm going to say over here, template. And I'm going to say type name. And in here, I'm going to write type. So essentially, this tells the compiler the type is a placeholder that is to be changed with the type based on the usage of the function. So now when I do something like this, I do not need to write four different functions anymore because I know the logic is identical and I told to compiler to create uh, the function based on their usage. If I run the program, you will see that the program will work exactly the same way. And every single time I run my program, it goes to that template and now my type actually over here becomes a container, uh, sorry, an integer. So it goes through it and asks if you see C is an integer now, and it comes down. And now the, the second time the display is called, it becomes a double. Now if you look at C over here, C is actually a double. Then it comes down and executes it perfectly. Now when I go to, mar to display type becomes a mark, when I look at it, it's actually a mark with all the things that is needed. It's a displayable thing and so on and so forth. And when I run it as a container, the type becomes a container. And now this is a container and works as such. Do we understand this? These things, these type of stuff that you write, that the type of function that you create, we call these templates. And templates are the way to teach the compiler with a specific logic on what we want to do. And based on uh, our usage, the compiler will create the function for us. Now, my question is, so, so, uh, so literally, the compiler will take a look at your source code first, and it sees this function is written in four different types. It literally generates four different functions overloads it with your type over and over without you knowing it behind the scene and that's how the compiler works are we okay with this now this ladies and gentlemen is a true type of polymorphism it's it's an absolute amazing thing about uh, the C++ language is that you don't even need to write the function. You give the logic to the compiler and you tell to the compiler, see how the usage is and just use and create the thing. So uh, the, the compiler will do it for you automatically. We call these function templates and it can be used for many different shapes and in, uh, in many different shapes and forms. I'll give you an example now. Give me a second. Let's go through this <coughs> over here. Uh, um, yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, is, 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 is this only applicable in the main function? That's exactly what I'm going to say. I'm going to actually change this container to double for the purpose of the next example. So in here, I'm going to do it like this. <coughs> Sorry. And then I'm going to say over here, OS dot, uh, OS dot uh, precision. I'm 
going to say 2 OS dot how did we set it to fix what was the name I forgot I'm my brain is blank anyone can help me I want to set the precision to fixed I want to set the uh, anyone how can I put iOS fixed in here what is the name of the function that I put over here and I put iOS fixed so I can show the double uh, set F thank you yes all right so I'm gonna set the precision just for that the, the heck of it so this container over here oh <laughs> yeah, put it uh, M data. This is data. Why did I put over there? Double, I don't know. So that's data. Let's see if it works now. <coughs> yes, and now I can actually set this to 100.25 and 200.35 to just kind of make it. Uh, a little bit more realistic okay so uh, <clears throat> um, are we okay down to this point everyone okay so there is one very important thing that I need to tell you over here that is extremely important to understand is that uh, uh, compiler and I want you to listen to this actually let me uh, uh, so Victor keep that question of yours that you say it has to be in main you said okay no we can put it in a header file but we'll, we'll, but, but let me just finish my uh, um, teaching of how to create the template then I'm gonna answer that question okay that's okay. a little too okay. early so just keep that in your mind, okay? Keep that question in your mind and we'll go through it. Okay, so this is the first template example. So I'm gonna have over here, I'm gonna say uh, template for identical logic. So it is Im extremely important to understand that the main purpose of creating a template is when you have an identical logic that you want to apply to different types and you create a template for it. Another example that I can put over here for you would be this. Assume, just imagine that my container over here had another operator overload. Let's say I had uh, something like uh, Boolean uh, operator to check for equality and then in here I'm going to add a double uh, value and then in here I would return um, uh, return I cannot check doubles for equality from IPC 144 I remember I remember that so I'm gonna say m data being uh, minus value being greater than uh, minus point point zero 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 one and m data uh, minus value be less than uh, 0 0.0001 that tells me that uh, these two containers if that's my precision for a for a value of a container let's say the container actually I'm gonna put it so let's say it's by CC's and and I and I put something like that it tells me that they are they have the exact same value between them so that's my precision for the container for the equality and I can do that for mark two. So I'm going to say for my mark, um, I have a Boolean uh, operator equal, and I'll check that one. I'll put this one over here, integer value. And the value that I put over here will return will be uh, m data being equal to value. Okay. So now my container and my mark are comparable to integers too. We can actually see if if the value of a container is a certain value or not. So I'm going to say uh, if, for example, r is set to uh, is is equal to uh, three 
hundred point uh, say that's uh, sixty point six and I'm gonna say uh, see how the uh, sum was done correctly this the sum was done correctly the addition and if I run the program we'll see that it runs and it checks it and it says the addition was done correctly so the the operator is working for it too are we okay with this now let's think for a second let's assume that I want to write a logic and go through an array and count how many things I have in that array, in that array and that array of mine can be array of anything so in here I'm gonna say uh, let's say I'm going to do it for a mark I want to go through a mark and see an array of marks and see how many people got for example 80% in a mark in a, in a mark so if I want to do that then it's it returns an integer and uh, th and it's gonna be uh, uh, let's call it count I'm gonna call it and in here I'm gonna pass an array of marks so it's gonna be mark mark pointer so and it's going to be a constant mark pointer uh, or mark array something like that and in here I'm going to pass an integer to it and let's let's do the container container is better so I'm going to go container and in here I'm going to say I have a double uh, that's the key that I'm looking for and in here I'm going to say size actually let's put this for size t because it's going to be uh, always a positive value now in here I'm gonna say size T uh, CNT that is the count then I'm gonna say for size T I set to 0 I less than oh I need the size of the array too so I'm gonna put over here and in here I'm gonna say um, uh, size T size size and in here I'm gonna say size and in here I'm gonna go um, I plus plus and I'm gonna say if uh, uh, the arrays element was equal to the key value that I am looking for then CNT plus plus add to the value of CNT and at the end I'm gonna say return uh, return CNT right over here it tells me that I did, didn't design it properly because <clears throat> if I actually come over here and see because it's not changing anything I'm supposed to make it a constant and I forgot to do it so that was bad design it's just checking it it's not changing in a, anything in my class so I had to make it a constant and now it works so now this count of mine can actually go through an array of containers and check to see if uh, 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 the container has some values or not whatever okay so in here I can say <coughs> say for example container um, uh, container array so I'll call it CA uh, and it's going to be an array and in here I'm going to have a container uh, container say 1.1 So let's add few containers in here. So that's going to be 225. And I'm going to have another container over here, 3.12. And I'm going to have another one over here, um, 234.1. And uh, have another one over here as um, I don't know 5.1 so these are the containers that I have in the array and now I want to go through them and see how many of them are 100.1 so now in here I have uh, how many things I have let me see um, 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight of them. I'm going to say over here size T uh, 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 <coughs> number of uh, 100 ones. And I'm going to say that's equal to, I can call the count function, pass the CA to it with the size 8, and I'm going to put over here 100.1. Now I'm going to say, see out the, the containers with 100.1 capacity. Capacity, so number of capacity is number of 101s, and I'm going to go to new line. Now, if I run the program, it runs through the container, and it tells me there are four of them because it went through all of them and counts it and tells me how many I have over here. Are we okay with this? Now, if I want to do the exact same thing for a mark, how do I do it? I have to take this thing, copy, paste it over here, I want to go through the mark, see how many people got 80%. If I want to do that, then I have to put a mark over here. Size T, I don't need to change because size T is size T, right? Uh, it's the number of things I'm asking. So in here, I'm going to put mark. And then for the key, it is supposed to be an integer because mark is receiving integers. So in here, I'm going to put int for the, for the key that is supposed to be uh, searched. The size t remains the same, and everything is the same. So now the same function, exactly the same function, is written over here for uh, um, the same function is written over here to search through marks. Are we okay with this? Now, if I want to convert this to a template, so I don't have to rewrite it, what do I do? Yes. Sorry for that. Yes. Hello? Yes, yes, I'm listening. Just a side question. Mm -hmm. um, size T and int, aside the fact that size T makes sure it is a positive number, is there any other advantage? No, or can we just it. use them that's interchangeably? It. Yes, you can. But because professionals now, we don't use int for size because size is impossible to be negative. Even for, I'm seeing that you're using it for your for loop. That's why I'm actually asking. Yeah, do you have a minus one index? I just, that's what I just... Yeah, yeah, so what I'm saying is that um, we could use int, but we are trying to go forward and be more precise. Um, Victor, there's something that you need to know about uh, C language. C language used to be exactly that. So we, we didn't even have a Boolean in it, if you recall from IPC, remember? In IPC, yeah. we said that uh, anything that is zero is false. Anything other than that is true, right? That's how we dealt yeah. with it. So C language used to be very loose with types, okay? Mm -hmm. And it didn't have mm -hmm. much of checking. It didn't have much of type safety. So people would return an integer when they wanted to return true, false. But it's C, and people who wrote it were geeks. So they would understand what does it mean. Um, we okay down to this point? Mm -hmm. And then as the, com the, the language yeah, yeah. advanced to C++ and not only C++, I'm talking about C++ 99, C++ 11, C++ 14, C++ 17, C++ 20. As the language is going forward, it becomes more type safe. So you will see soon that we specifically work in a way to make sure that the types that are used are not casted by mistake between the two. If you recall from our first example over here, from our first example over here, where we had on the identical logic, and I only created an int in here, and I passed that double thing, it worked. 
but it casted the double to an integer. Remember that? Yeah. That's horrible. That's bad. Because you don't know that you add and display is not written for a double. And the compiler won't even complain. And the answer that you are getting is an imprecise thing, correct? So, right. so we are trying to go forward with type safety and try to write the program the way we intend it to work. Therefore, writing size t to return the number of things or size t for an array, we should be obsessed about it. That's what C++ is moving towards, to make everything clear and make things work the way they are supposed to, not the way we, are, we can get away with it. Does that make sense? Yes. Or, yes. So yes, the answer is, can we use an integer? Yes. Can I go outside with no pants on? Yes. But it's better not to do that, right? Yeah. Yes, and that's the thing. So you, it's 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 exactly that question. Can I write an int over here? Of course you can, but please don't, because size is supposed to get negative. Can I go outside with my pants off? Yes, you can, but please don't. It's embarrassing. Correct? <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's that's. Okay. Thank you. No, no, no problem. So that's 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 the reason for it. Okay. So now going back to the converse of. Uh, of uh, uh, templates. Now in here, as you see, I have a mark in here and I have an int. So I have two types that these things is relative to. I had to change this to a container and this one to a double. If I want to change this, if I want to look inside an array of integers and see what it is, I, I can write the exact same thing over here. But instead of mark in here, I have to go int and my key remains int. So now if I have an integer array, int um, i array, and, and I create an array like, uh, I don't know, 1, 3, 3, 4, 3, 5, 6, whatever, something like that, and uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them, if I want to, I can actu actually run the exact same code over here and say number of threes and say I integer array and I have nine of them and I want to see how many of them are three and number of uh, int integers with value of three will be number of threes over here for me and if I run this beautiful program of mine, I'll see that it works and it actually tells me there are three of them. Seriously, there are three of them? Well, let's make it four so it's not three out of three, okay. With value of three is, oh, they are both four now. Um, let's add another three over here and make this one 10. There you go, that's better. So now I can actually run this in three different things. Are we okay with this? So this count thingy of mine, instead of these three things, now it can be actually converted to a template. So I can put this one over here. Okay, so the types that needs to actually change over here is the first one is this one. So this is the array type. And then I have the size t. It doesn't matter what type of an array, it's the size. Then in here for the double, I have the key type. Are we okay with this, ladies and gents? Now I have my template. So I have size t count, array type, that's array type, size t size, key type is the key. And I be, it should work over here. So in here, I'm going to say template, template, uh, type name, array type, I don't recall if I'm supposed to write the second one or not. I think, I don't know. Let's see. 
I think I can go type name again and then the key type, if I recall correctly. Key type, okay. And there you go. Uh, so if I do it like this, then what's going to happen? Now, uh, looking at it, I'm going to say, okay, this template is written for this type of thing that we have. And now uh, if I actually, so I can just completely uh, uh, ignore this and I'm going to um, uh, comment them. I'm going to say replaced by one template. And if I bring that template over here, well, we'll see that based on the function calls that I created over here, it will work exactly the same way with absolutely no difference. Are we okay with this? Now, if you look at the old versions of C++, you will see that you could actually, instead of type name, you could actually write over here class. So class or type name, potatoes, potatoes. They used to write over here class. It was confusing. They say, why don't we just put what it is, which is essentially type name. So if I run it, it's the same way. It doesn't make any difference. So uh, yeah, well, you can write either class over here. So this is uh, old C++. So I'm going to write, this is old C++. And this one is new C++. So you're going to see old school people like me, because it's because we are used to it. We, we, we could we sometimes just type class over there, and it works perfectly for both of them. Are we OK with this? <laughs> Now, let's say my mark over here. Now, this is what I want you to, to uh, okay, so now let's go to Victor's question. Like, the question is, uh, okay, so I want to modularize this too. I want, because I, these are useful stuff, I want to be able to use it, so I want to be able to share it between different places. How can I do that? <coughs> <coughs> actually, let me actually write add one more thing over here, which is very useful. Uh, if uh, uh, so, let's say um, 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 I'm going to write a few more templates over here. Let's say I want to display an array. So if I want to do that, display the elements of an array in here, I'm going to say, uh, um, let me just make this thing. Uh, show things a little bit more elegant. So in here, I'm going to say, instead of CNT, I'm going to, this is a container. So I'm going to say container like that. And put over here something like this. So it shows the container value one by one. And for the mark, I'm going to do the same thing. So it becomes more mark. And in here, I'm going to do it like this. So it shows the value like that. Now, let's say let's say I uh, want to, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Let's say I want to display the arrays. So right off the bat, because I'm used to templates right now, I'm going to I'm going to do it. So in here I'm going to say template template I want to show the elements of an array. So what I need is the array. So I'm going to say template uh what do I write over here? What do I write? So in here I'm going to say type name array type and I'm going to say so I want to display the elements of an array so I'm going to go void display and in here I'm going to put constant array type that's my array type and I'm going to call it over here array and I'm going to have a size t uh, size then what I'll do 
uh, I'll go through the size. I'm going to go through the, the array. I'm going to say for size t t i uh, set to zero, i less than size, and i plus plus. And I'm going to start printing the things one by one. So I'm going to say. Uh, <coughs> If i is equal to z uh, if if its i is not equal to zero, if it's if i is not equal to zero, I'll go see out. Uh, I'll go see out uh, and uh, say a comma like that. If it's not equal to zero. But uh, and I and I go like that. I put a comma. Then I'm gonna go C out, and I'm gonna print the array. And at the end, I'll go C out and L. So now this function of mine will display any array comma separated. Uh, so now um, in here, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do the count. Then in here, I'm gonna say display display. And I'm going to pass integer array with size of 10. And in here, I'm going to pass, after doing the count, I'm going to I'm going to say display <coughs> the, uh, what is the other one? Uh, the um, uh, container array with size of 8. And go through it like that. So it's going to show uh, the first container like that, as you see there. Uh, eight of them so container like that uh, with the values that it has and uh, my <coughs> my uh, integers and now that template is working for any array that wants to get printed comma separated are we okay with this all right now going back to your IPC 144 what if I wanted these things to actually be sorted so if I want these things to be sorted between uh, different values, if I want that to happen, uh, actually, it's a little too much now. Let's just do it, do it like this. So these are the templates that I have that are useful that I want to use. <coughs> so for what we have, and this is, uh, I want everybody's listening ears on. This is a question for final test that you're listening. Do we understand? I am giving you one of the questions in final test. Do you understand this? Okay, and I want you to listen to me carefully. <clears throat> For the compiler to be able to generate the whole logic of the template, it needs the body of the template too. Now, in regular things, when you created a module, we created a .h and a .cpp, if you recall, and we put all the header files inside a dot h and we put the body of the function inside the dot cpp the problem is that if you recall uh, how the compilers work did i talk about how compilers work in this class beautiful so i'm just going to remind you very quickly i'm not going to go through it in in detail i'm just going to uh, come on, it should be somewhere. Hmm. It is searching through my... Really? There you go. So, <coughs> if we recall what we have done what from from compilers, <coughs> from how compiler compilers work, <coughs> as I mentioned, I'm sorry, just a second. As I mentioned before, when the compiler works, when there are several modules. Each pass of the module only sees that part of the compilation, which essentially means 
when the compiler is compiling 1.cpp, 2.cpp, 3.cpp, and main.cpp, when you put the compiler command over here and you compile everything, what the compiler does in its first pass, all it sees is this. So it says this header file, this CPP file. And for example, in this one, in the in the green one, it's gonna pass it like this. So all it sees over here is the uh, one dot it's three dot CPP and the header file of one dot CPP. What what it sees is only the header file. Only the header file and the rest of it. The body of the module.cpp is not visible to the compiler. Do we understand this? Because of this fact that the compiler during the compilation only sees the header files of other modules that are used and not their CPPs, only sees their header files, because of this fact we cannot and the fact and the fact that the compiler requires the whole body of the function to be able to generate its code we cannot have a cpp file for a template module if you are creating a template module everything should reside inside the header file so if i want these templates to go in a module i have to actually create in the header file uh, the module that I have well, let's create a new item I'm gonna create the header file and I'm gonna call it over here uh, what do I call it uh, my templates dot H and as you see I started with lowercase because it's not a class these are just functions and I'm gonna add them so uh, in here I'm gonna go uh, if not define exactly the same thing that I have done if not define uh, my templates uh, H, um, I, I'm I'm not writing it in a in a uh, in a namespace, so I'm not putting the namespace stds here. In here, I'm going to say define, and in, when I'm actually writing the templates, all the template body and everything about the template should go inside the inside the header file. You cannot have a CPP file for it because the compiler needs the body to be able to generate the code, needs the logic of the function to generate the code. And, uh, and let me just uh, control Z this. So in here, I'm going to say templates with multiple types. So now in here, I can just remove all the templates that I have and simply include my templates. And because all those templates are available in my header file, they are usable for my CPP and, oh, it gives me an error. What is here? see out oh <laughs> sorry i forgot to mention in here that i have to go uh, include io stream and because it's a header file i cannot use uh i cannot do using in it so i have to have std for every single c out that i have actually there are just two of them are they or three and this one And this end L. I think I'm good. Let's save it and run it one more time. Hey, you forgot uh, to put a CD in line 28 and 28, 28. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. So now if I run it, uh, it will work perfectly as if it's inside of it. So remember, templates should all reside within your uh your uh, module are we okay with this all right and 
another thing that I have to mention, like for example, if I want to write a sort for my uh, templates, if I want to write a sort, like a bubble sort that we had in uh, in IPC 144. Um, uh, so um, uh, with the bubble sort, we had something like this. So I'm going to write over here template, and in here I'm going to write type name. Um, it's an array type. So I'm going to write it AT, array type is too big. So uh, an array type, and I'm going to write a bubble sort. So I'm going to write void sort, so I want to sort the arrays too. I'm going to write sort, and in here I'm going to say uh, array type. This is not going to be constant because I'm going to change it. That's um, 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 array, and that's that. Uh, and then in here I'm going to have size T, that's the size of the array. Uh, then I'm going to say size T, I, and J. Those are the, the loops that I'm going to go through. Then I'm going to say for I set to zero, I uh, less than size minus one, size minus one, and I plus plus. So that's the outer loop for my bubble sort. Then I'm going to say for J set to um j set to zero and j less than size uh, minus i minus one and i uh, and j plus plus now in here i need in this case i need to do the comparison so i'm going to say if uh if i want it to be uh for example, ascending, I have to check for descending and uh, do, a, do it reverse if it is. So I'm going to say if array uh, j uh, is, so if the, 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 this one is greater than the next one, array j plus 1, then I have to swap the values between the two. And how do I swap? Uh, um, I can either do it over here, or I can do it in a function. So I'll do it in a function. I'm going to say swap. Then in here, I'm going to say uh, address of array j and uh, address of array uh, j plus 1. So I'm swapping the value of the two. Now, if I do something like this, then I need to write the swap function. When you are doing, when you are faced with something like this, actually creating, uh, calling another function, then that swap must be a template of its own. So in here, I have to create another template. And in here, I'm going to say type name. It's just the type. And in here, I'm going to say swap. And for swap, I'm going to have uh, type pointer A, type pointer B, <coughs> and uh, and it's a void. And I'm going to say type A, which means uh, type uh, temp. And I'm going to set it to target of A. Then I'm going to say target of A is set to target of B. And then I'm going to say target of B is set to temp. And swapping is done. Now my sort sorts to arrays and if I come back over here and try to before uh, displaying the, the thing if I go over here sort uh, CA and in here I say size is 8 and if I try to run this code let's see what happens I get an error what the error is the error is <laughs> I forgot the one over there. Let's do it one more time. As you see, the error message becomes a little freaky. Take a look. What does it say? AT does not define this operator or a conversion to a type acceptable for the predefined operator with AT as container. And what is that? That's binary greater than sign. As you see in here, I am using a greater than operator between the elements of the array but a container or a mark are not defining the greater than operator therefore they cannot be used with this templates do we understand this
with the sort template. Okay, because of this, again. Sorry, can you explain this one more time? Sorry. Okay, when I'm, uh, stay with me, don't go. So when I am sorting AT array, this becomes a container array, correct? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I have an element of the container array, the element becomes the container itself, correct? Yes. So I'm saying container greater than container, correct? Yeah. Do I have a greater than operator in a container? No. Okay, no, yeah. So the container yeah. cannot do it. It, it okay. could be easily done with... Uh, with the array of integers, I'll demonstrate. So I can say over, I can actually do it like this. I can say sort uh, integer array and 10. That is perfectly okay. If I actually comment that sort and I run this one, it will work perfectly because uh, the, what shall we call it? Integer and greater than operator, it's defined, it will work. Okay, but it doesn't work for a con con container. Because of that fact, remember this. Every single template that you create must carry intense documentation with it. So, for example, this template type that, that you see over here, I have to put documentation for it. So, in this documentation, I'm going to say uh, uh, a function to add and display the sum, uh, to, to find the sum, to calculate the sum and display it. This template, a, temp, a function template, my apologies. Template, template, this template requires what does it require <clears throat> operator there's a p missing in your template oh thank you requires operator operator plus an insertion operator for o stream defined for its type okay and then in here, type name type, I'm going to say uh, object, uh, object type, um, um, first object, second object, sum of two objects. So now when I have this add and display, if I choose to use add and display over here, I put the comment for it's the only thing that I didn't use. <laughs> so let me go to my sort in here, okay? So I'm going to add one for my sort. Now in here I'm going to put three slashes and it brings it. I'm going to say sorts an array with uh, specific size, uh, with a specific size, or with... Uh, um uh, uh sort and sorts sorts and array let's just put it up like this sorts uh uh fun uh sorts and function template to sort an array requires uh requires what does it require so when we look at it we see over here uh, comparison between two, operator uh, greater, and in swap, as you see, what is assignment at the moment of creation? What is, what is called in here? What is called in here, people? What is called here, people? <laughs> Yes, Vincent, but which one? You can activate your mar microphone. Javier, you're right. But name it. Hmm. One argument for Shocker. Yeah, but which one? 
Which one argument constructed? That one argument constructed, what is the type of its argument? What is the type of the argument that is being passed to temp over there? It's a, um, a mem memory um, address. What is the type? I didn't say what is the uh, um, type of the variable. I said pointer. No. The a e. It's a what? It's an integer. It's a double. What is the type of target of a? What is the type of the target of a? You people. It's type, correct? So I'm creating a temporary object out of its own type. When an object is constructed using an object of the same type, what is being called? Victor. Please ask, say that again. I am creating an object with a one argument constructor and that one argument is constructor it's receiving the same type the type of the argument is type okay let's clear this the type of target of a is t correct mm -hmm. you are creating a t out of a t what type of constructor is called You are all failing the final. Oh. <laughs> default constructor? No, default constructor is a no argument constructor. This is one argument constructor. A one argument constructor whose type, the argument that it's receiving, is the object of the same type. It is called a what? A copy constructor. Bad people you are. Copy constructor. Copy constructor. Copy constructor. Copy constructor, for heaven's sake. A copy constructor will be called. Constructor. Now. Uh, I, I just had the copy constructor. I know. I, know. I saw you. I wanted somebody to say it. I know you said it. Nan said it too. Javier said it too. Like we had three people said it and everybody else found everybody else identified that this is a one argument constructor but one argument constructor can be many different types of constructor the most important one is a copy constructor please remember okay so i was joking when i said you will fail the thing you will not but you will be in trouble you will pass with 52 percent okay <laughs> so so now <clears throat> so copy constructor so it should function templates to, to sort and it requires uh Operator greater, copy construction, copy constructor. Now, what is called over here? Please make me happy. What is called over here? One object is being set to another object. What is the name? Thank you. Now everybody is actually... <laughs> Actually, one person said, uh, <laughs> one person said assignment constructor. <laughs> copy assignment, not assignment constructor. It's copy, it's copy, copy, uh, co <laughs> copy assignment, okay? Copy assignment. So copy assignment. So if I have a copy constructor and I have a copy assignment, what does the object need, people? I have a copy constructor and copy assignment needed for an object, which means object should, fo should follow what? It was the last lecture. Rule of three, thank you, Vincent. You got, you got uh, 2% for the final test. Okay, rule of three, rule of three. So. Instead of doing all that, I'm going to say function template to sort an array requires an and rule of three.
rule of three means copy construct and cause so this sort will only work if rule of three applies and operator greater than will work so now if my if i want my container to be actually sorted what i need to do is to go to the container and overload the operator greater than with const container reference c and a const filter here obviously and then i will i should be able to say i should say return m data being greater than uh contain uh, c dot m data and that now my container can actually be sorted using my template and if i run it you will see now the container is sorting sorted in an ascending order are we okay with this <laughs> And the last thing that I want to mention over here that is extremely important before we go, the last thing that I want to mention over here that is extremely important to know before we go <coughs> is this. For example, let's say, let's say I have the mark in here. And mark, instead of having operator greater, it has an operator less than. So if I actually try to, uh, if I actually try to mark array, let's call it, <coughs> and in here I'm gonna put, why did I say container? Mark. If I create a mark with ten, let's say I have five marks. 20, 20, 100, 100, and 8. So these are the four marks that I have. So now if I want to actually sort the marks, so if I say <coughs> for the count, I can do, I can actually say size uh, M, size T, M, uh, 60s, okay? will be uh, equal to count of of uh, m a and and five five and sixty i can do that there is no problem with that <coughs> and i can even display it so i can go display uh, mark array and i put five over here so that will display the mark and count it and do all the good stuff over here so so uh, so in here I'm gonna say um, so I'm gonna say number of marks with uh, sixty with value sixty and in here I'm going to value in 60s. Okay, so it will work if I do it like this, it will work. But if I want to actually sort the marks, <coughs> also it's a good idea to have C out something like this, not to be too crowded in there. like this so we can separate them <coughs> now what I want to say over here if I want to actually sort the marks before doing anything if I want to say over here sort <coughs> marks and five <coughs> obviously if I actually run this program it will fail and tell me hey mark doesn't have that operator <coughs> I can choose to overload that mark thingy so I can actually so if I have something like this where's my sort so as you see, I have a sort sort thingy over here. So I'm going to have sort. So I'm just going to come over here and 
just write the sort over here for mark so in here instead of a template I'm gonna say over here mark array and size yada 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 and in here I'm gonna say less than and I'm gonna put a not in front of it I can do that right so it will work in this one so this sort of mine will actually sort the mark and swap is a template that works with mark it doesn't matter because mark uh, and and, uh, and uh, uh, it doesn't it doesn't it, the rule of three is okay for it because it doesn't have any resources <coughs> so if you create an overload for a template and the compiler sees that you have that overload created it won't bother creating that so overloads always so overloads have priority <coughs> overloads come first okay which means <coughs> if I actually run this program it will actually sort the marks now in an ascending order but the logic for it is not the same as the other one I had to make some changes because my mark didn't fit that one so you can overload a template and if the overload already exists the compiler won't try to do the template for you so to create something that <coughs> to write um, to make your code work with a template that you don't have you can simply implement the parts that your class doesn't fit into do we understand this <laughs>
Remember, if you're confused, compiler will be confused too. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay. For Thursday's quiz. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So for Thursday's. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so for Thursday's quiz, which contents will be covered? Like, what should we re review? For Thursday, templates. Template, okay. The other okay. quizzes are all before. So all your quizzes are up. You have till 23rd or 24th to do it, depending on which one it is. Okay. Oh, really? All of our quizzes are up? <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Let me just I, let me just double check, make sure I'm not lying to you. <laughs> okay. Can you check? Can you check if our... I'm um, checking. Oh, OMG. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is <laughs> out. It is out. <laughs> see on which topic it is. I don't want. Me, I want to make sure that the topic is not wrong. So, the last one is on week ten. It's week ten. So let's go to week ten. Let's go to week 10. Yes. So the last one that you're doing at home, it's going to be derived classes with resource, but function templates will be in the, in the class. Or if you want to, I can leave that function template for next week. You want to do that? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, the mysterious voice says, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So. Uh, um, for, um, also, Father, you mentioned that this is the last topic for the semester, right? No, I said one of the last. I have to go through the overview of polymorphism. I could do it right now, but it's 9.50 and you have to go. That overview yeah. of polymorphism takes around five minutes. I was, I was, uh, well, I was asking is I was, uh, I, if we had more time, if you could take us like maybe a review of oh yeah maybe from, anything from all, week, the week eight, that, all the lectures all the lectures that we have will be on demand, which means when I come over there, you tell me for that talk about this. Poof, that day I'm gonna do a review on that. So it's your responsibility to study and see what you want the review to be on. You come to class, I'm gonna say what do you want me to talk about. If you don't say anything, I'll go home. Okay, so it's your sure. responsibility to study and see what do you need me to review for you. Okay, so <laughs> the for the uh, lab that you're coming in, I'm going to talk about overview of polymorphism, language standards, going through those. It takes 10, 15 minutes max. And then after that, the whole classes that we have in next, I think, two and a half weeks, it's going to be all yours. Okay, anything you mm -hmm. ask, that's going to be the thing. And the test is going to be on the lab week 13th. So 14th, we're not going to have any class. Okay? Okay. Sorry, can you say... <laughs> can you say Sorry, can you so say again when would that be the final? Do you see this thing over here? It says 13. Ah, week 13th lab week session, 13th. right? Yes, the first one is open session. The second one is final test. Okay. Okay. It's Thank like you. About two or two weeks from now, two and something. Two, yeah, two weeks from now. <coughs> so you have three sessions. Is it two weeks or three weeks? Two weeks? Three weeks? Two and a half weeks? Something like that. All right. Any questions? Uh, professor, will you upload uh, the recording of this class? I, I'll do it right now, actually because I'm right at the computer that is recording and after that I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop and I'll do it immediately right now. And I'll do it, do the last one too. All right. Thank you very much. Questions? Suggestions? So this week, you're not gonna have a, we could do the derived classes with resource quiz in the class. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me let me take that. F if if nobody have done that quiz yet, I'm gonna take it off, and you can do that in the class. So let me see quiz ten. Let me just see if anybody has done it or not. If they nobody has done it, 
is week nine. No? So I'll remove it. So <coughs> I'll remove quiz nine and you're gonna do it in class. So why? Why are we doing that? Why? Yeah, it was better. You're gonna miss your chat GPT? That's why you don't like it? No, at home is better. No, at school is better. <laughs> okay, okay, week nine, week ten is removed, and <clears throat> you're gonna do it in class with me. Oh, so week nine and week ten, two, both of them, we're gonna do it in no, class. No, 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 just week ten. Oh, oh, quiz, quiz nine, gonna, week ten. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that to you. Okay, two quizzes okay, per day. Okay. That's not a good thing to do. So week eight and nine, you do it at home. Week ten, quiz nine, week ten, we do it in class uh, this week. And quiz 10 has got twist and that is week 11 and uh, all the good stuff that we have. That's going to be the next one. All right. <clears throat> Any questions before before we go? It's 954. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. Have yourself a beautiful, wonderful day. And we will talk to you on uh, Thursday, if everything's good, and 99.9% .9 it's going to be an in-person one, but again, nobody knows if this thing's going to go downwards. Check your email in the morning before you come. Have a beautiful day and talk to you soon. Thank you. No problem.